today's tutorial will be on the unified application. The unified application is the state of Ohio's business certification application in which you can apply for all four of the state of Ohio's business certifications. The first certification is the MBE or the Minority Business Enterprise. Next is EDGE or Encouraging Diversity, Growth and Equity. We also have a WBE program, which is the Women Business Enterprise. And lastly, a DFBE program, which is the Veteran Friendly Business Enterprise. The application does have the ability to save. So if you wanted to take a break and come back at a later time or date, you can do so. On step two of 18, you will be selecting your business structure. If it's a sole proprietor, corporation, partnership, LLC, or an association. You will list the date your business structure was established. And if you selected BBE, you must list which certification criteria you want to use for your VBE certification. Step three of 18 is company information. Here you will list your address, email, business phone, business fax, and a web address. The business fax and web address are both optional fields. Step four of 18 will be business procurement information. You will list your business procurement type between construction, architecture and engineering, professional services, goods and services, or information and technology services. Next, you'll want to select the business type. Your business type may not be found here. If you don't find your business type, I would say select what is most closely related to the type of business you have. And then you are given the ability to give a detailed description of the services and or products you provide. Again, be very detailed in this description. Next, you will list your company's employees. They want to know the number of employees held for the business for the last three years and you do have the option to enter additional years if wanted. Step 5 of 18 will be business information. They want to know the date the business began operations. The date the ownership was assumed by the disadvantaged or socially disadvantaged individual. And then the method of acquisition. You'll be then asked a few yes or no questions. If you answer yes to the questions, they do give you a box to explain your answer. If you answer no to the questions, they will then be grayed out so you can move forward. Step six of 18 is ownership information. If you apply for edge certification, you will need to fill out this owner's assets and liabilities as well as all the owner information on this page. Business related compensation refers to any compensation that you were paid for the work that you've done for the business or the owner listed has done for the business for that year. If you did not take a salary, if you put all your money back into the business or took zero dollars as your salary, you can list zero in these boxes. So after you fill out all this information, you'll want to go down and hit save and then go back to the top and complete this owner's assets and liabilities tab. And again, this assets and liabilities will only be available if you selected edge certification. You have to list your assets and all their dollar values, your liabilities and the dollar values. And at the bottom, it will total up a net worth for you. You will click save. And then you can move on to the next page. On step seven of 18, we're listing some additional business information. 
again, there are some questions on this page that have the yes or no options. If you say yes, you will be asked to explain your answer. If you say no, the boxes will be grayed out for you to move forward. In this particular section here, they will want you to move anything that applies from this left side over to the right side. If it all applies, you can select them all and move them over. Um, if just one applies, you can select one and move it over. But anything that does apply must be listed on this right side here. And then there will be a couple more yes or no questions. Step 8 of 18 will be Board of Directors information. This page will only appear if you selected Corporation as your business type. And Step 9 of 18 is the Principal Executive Officer information. Again, this page will only be populated if you select corporation as your business structure type. Step 10 of 18 is the independent decision making function page. It will list multiple functions that happen in the business. They want to know who completes those functions and who they report to for a final say. If you're a single member LLC or just a person who owns a business and it's just you, this page will be a lot of you inputting your name over and over again. Step 11 of 18 is the business gross receipts and sales. So they're looking for the last three years of your business gross receipts or sales. If you haven't been in business for a complete three years, it's okay to put zero and just a date in some of these fields um, and list the years that you have been in business. The dates on these fields must be consecutive years as seen here, 2022, 2021, and 2020 and the dates must match as well. And you do have the ability to enter a fourth and fifth year of gross receipts if you want, um, but the only three are required. You would then select the business tax code. Um, if you have filed taxes for your business, a lot of times this number is on your tax forms. If not, go through this list and find the most closely related option and you can select that. And the UNSPSC codes will be the same. Um, they may not be listed on your taxes, but you can go through those and find the most closely related and select that. Step 12 of 18 is a list of contributions or transfers of assets. So any contributions or transfers of any assets to your business will be listed here. If you have none, you can simply select this box that says no contributions or assets contributed and this whole field will gray out so you can move on to the next page. Step 13 of 18 is contract information. Here they want you to list the three largest contracts in terms of money that your business has held or operated. If you don't operate with contracts, that's okay. You can hit no contracts and these fields will gray out. Um, if you don't have three contracts, again, you can hit no contracts or one or two of these and just list one, just list two if you have that information. Um, but just list exactly. And we'll go to the next page. Step 14 of 18 will be the professional license page. If you have no professional license, you can select no licenses and move forward. The professional license is a license that is deemed necessary for you to operate your business. Um, an example I've always used is an electrician. An electrician must have a license in order to operate their business. Um, if it's not required for you to have that license to operate your business, it's not needed for this to be listed here.
step 15 of 18 will be your personal eligibility statement. Here you will basically be selecting your reason for certification and some of these options do have a secondary option as well. Step 16 of 18 will be your, your owner's attestation page. And here you'll just be attesting that the majority owner of the business is the one that completed this application as we require. Step 17 of 18 will be uploading your supporting documents. It will list all the documents required of all businesses down here. And you should upload a document for each one of these documents listed. If you don't have one of these documents here, I would suggest you make a cover sheet, um, maybe an Excel form or a Word document. List off each document that you don't have and give a written reason why you don't have that document. And that will help expedite this certification process for you. Step 18 of 18 will be a summary page. It should list all the questions and answers you've given in response. It should also show the list of documentation you attached at the end of the application. And if you're okay with everything and how it looks on this application, you can press file. And by pressing file, you will submit your application to our office. And you should receive a transaction and receipt number. If you click on your transaction and receipt number, it will bring up a more detailed receipt for you in which it gives you your receipt number, confirmation number, and a date that you filed on. And that is our tutorial for the unified application.